It's high noon. Hey everybody, welcome back to Broncos, Broncos Gaming World doing a look at the Rogel Dorn main battle tank for Warhammer 40k, the Astra Militarum army. So right here is the front of the box. This is a big Billy badass tank. I'm super excited to get to work on it. I'm going to take a look at the back of it real quick. You get another good look at the tank itself. All the different kind of weapon combinations. This one's got the twin battle cannon. This one's got the oppressor cannon and the coaxial auto cannon. I, I honestly can't tell you how excited I am to build this kit. This is kind of the uh, middle tank between the Lehman Russ battle tank and their big uh, titanic bane blades and shadow swords and stuff like that. So that's what the thing's going to look like. Here's the kit that we get with it. So here we've got the instruction manual. Instruction manuals, like I was said before in previous videos, the uh, the manuals have really, really done a good job of kind of helping you figure out how to build the model. Doesn't really, uh, it's not too complicated. This kit doesn't look too bad, and they give you some extra options for your your stuff down here on the bottom where it's like the oppressor cannon or the uh, twin link battle cannon to show you the parts you need and if you're running any of the uh, heavy stubbers or anything like that gives you the options for that as well and here's the actual model kit itself this is the uh, main chassis components and the turret here your turret your top of the chassis top of your turret and I think this is the front of your chassis Oh yeah, this is the front of it. So these are all your chassis pieces and your battle cannon components. These are going to be your, your side sponsons and your tracks and treads. Here you see the heavy bolter or the multi-milta here. And then you've got the actual track pieces and stuff here with this part of it. So these tracks are huge compared to any of the Lehman Russ battle tanks. They're just bigger versions of them, but they're really massive. I do almost have an immediate complaint here that it doesn't look like they have them called out what track pieces fit where. Hopefully it's pretty simple because that was a big complaint I had with the old Lean Rust kits is that the track pieces weren't easy to put together. And then we've got the transfer sheet that you get with the kit as well. So there we go. Roll Dorn Battle Tank unboxed. I'm going to get this bitch put together and I'll give you guys a look at it when it's all done. So here we have the complete built kit for the Rogaldorn here. I went with the multi Milton Sponsons and I have the heavy stubber up top. I went with the heavy stubbers as well on the front weapon arrays there. Also have the smoke launchers on it. The kit wasn't too bad to build but it was a little bit more challenging than I thought. The instructions universally were pretty good though so I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. A couple of the pieces aren't quite as straight as I would have liked but it is what it is. All right, and here's the fully painted Rogodorn. Uh, I did a undercoat of a, uh, it's a, I think it's a camo green sold by Rustoleum, and then I do a stippling effect on the rest of the tank just using Army Painter's green skin color, and then I do a highlight with uh, the Goblin Green, and then the very edges get a highlight of a maize yellow speed paint. I don't do a whole lot of it. And then I just use like a, a, uh, a bolt gun metal -y kind of look for most of the weapons. I do the Nolan Oil for the wash on them. The tracks are the Army Painter Speed Paint 2.0, uh, I think it's Broadsword Silver. And then the, the decals on it just take it to the extra, st extra step above. That makes the, the model just look fantastic. I'm really, really happy with this one for you know an average painter. I think it looks pretty great. All right, let's break down the Rogador battle tank like on the table. All right, so its stat line is yeah, it's freaking bonkers. So it's got a move of ten, which is a little bit slow, slow for most vehicles. Toughness of twelve, which is massive. That puts it on par with a freaking Land Raider. Save a two plus, pretty standard for any heavier tank. Eighteen wounds, just the absolute beef bus worth of freaking wounds on this thing. Leadership of seven and the objective control of five. So its stat line is freaking amazing, solid. Its normal loadout is either the twin battle cannon here, 
Twin Battle Cannon, 48 inch range, D6 plus 3, 4 plus to hit, strength 10, minus 1 save and does 3 damage base, and it's twin link so you get to re-roll any wounds. I don't like the Twin Battle Cannon, I feel like it's underpowered. It's supposed to be two Battle Cannons, and yeah, I'm aware that Twin Linked is, is kind of their go-to for anything that's Twin Linked, or like Twin, like a Storm Bolter or any of those, but... I just feel like that the, this twin battle cannon is just under underpowered. It's like it's supposed to be two big battle cannons, and it's pretty much just one battle cannon. They get to reroll failed wounds on, which it's freaking strength ten. So you're wounded on twos against, I'd say like seventy five percent of the things that that you can field. You're probably wounding on twos. So I feel like it just really makes it a weaker option, which is why the oppressor cannon here. With Blast, the Mega 72 inch range has the same amount of attacks, die 6 plus 3, still hits on 4s, has a strength of 12, minus 2 save to it, and still does the 3 damage. I, I don't see a reason not to take the Oppressor Cannon. You get to shoot it from across, across the earth, does 2 more strength, so it's definitely better at punching vehicles. Minus 2 save is pretty good. And the base 3 damage is solid. I mean, it isn't like a tank destructor, but it's definitely better than the Twin Battle Cannon by a lot on that, in that respect. You know, so, and then you get, if you run the Oppressor Cannon, you also get the Coaxial Auto Cannon, which is just an extra, you know, light vehicle, heavy infantry killer. On, this, on the data sheet here, the ballistic skill number is wrong, I think, on that. The Quexel Battle Cannon, I think, is supposed to hit on fours, just like everything else. Uh, the other, the other, uh, so the base loadout again, before I get carried away. Twin Battle Cannon, Castigator Gatling Cannon, and I think up to three Heavy Stubbers. And you can either pick Meltagun, or Multi-Meltas, or Heavy Stubbers, I think. Or no, excuse me, Meltaguns, or Heavy Stubbers. And I don't know why you would do the Meltaguns. I feel like melted guns a little overkill. I mean, you could do it if you're really, especially. It depends on what kind of opponent base you have. And that's that kind of goes broad for all of it. What kind of component? What kind of opponent base do you have? Are you just playing like with your friends or your family, and you're you're only playing against them all the time? I'm like, then it would be foolish for me to sit there and say, "Oh, you should take multi meltas and melted guns against everything." The, you know that that that's that's out of bounds. If your opponent's playing a lots of lots of vehicles and lots of heavy infantry, then your multi meltas and melta guns are going to be a better call. If you're playing against somebody who's fielding you know swarms like tyranids or orcs, then your heavy stubbers are probably going to be a better call. But anyways, so yeah, your your loadout's going to be either up to three heavy stubbers or three melta guns depending on your choice. Then you can get your side sponsons, which are also going to have the option for multi meltas or heavy bolters. The tank I just built that we saw in this video, I went with the oppressor cannon and the Quaxel auto cannon, the three heavy stubbers, and the sponsons. I did the multi meltas, so I kind of have a hybrid. He's kind of good against everything. Um, I mean, he, this dude is just an absolute force on on the table that you've got to deal with because if you don't he is going to freaking punish the living shit out of your b-hole he's just gonna gonna whoop you um then he's got uh his abilities he's got deadly demise die six so if it goes it's, it, it's gonna go big and then he's got the absolute dominant ablative plating which yes it's only a once per battle but once per battle you get to give most likely whatever attack that that your opponent's going to use to try to finger of death your vehicles you can just tell them to f off and give them the middle finger and tell them well you can you can hit me with that but that attack's going to be zero damage so you're pretty much guaranteeing that at least one of their serious anti-tank weapons is just going to going to shit the bed and not do anything so that's uh that's the Rogel Dorn for you. He's, he's a, like I said, he's an absolute freaking beef bus. He's just ridiculous. So, yeah, here's your options. It says Twin Battle Cannon can be replaced with the Oppressor Cannon, Quexel Auto Cannon. Yes, please. 
uh, the model's Cascader Gatling Cannon will be placed with the Pulverizer Cannon. So let's visit that real quick. So the Pulverizer Cannon... Pulverizer Cannon, it's a 24-inch range, die 6 attacks. Still hits on 4s because it's guard. You can do things to bu to to buff that with orders and stratagems. But base attack of 4. Strength 9, AP minus 3, and does 3 damage. Pulver the Pulverizer Cannon is pretty freaking good. It's, again, good against, you know, medium and light vehicles. It'll it'll wound rhinos and razorbacks and some of the other marine-type vehicles on fours. It'll do, I think, Dreadnought. Most Dreadnoughts are, are Toughness 9, so they'll do them on fours. And then some of your, your more medium and heavier vehicles, it's going to wound them on fives. Which, at that stage, you're kind of out of bounds. Anything, if you're wounded on fives... You really got to question whether it's worth it. Now, the Pulverizer Cannon 2 is a blast weapon. It hits like an absolute anvil against infantry units because that minus 3, it that pushes even Terminators to where they're using their invulnerable save. Well, I mean, it's even up, so it's a 5 plus either way. But you're, you're pushing them to the brink of needing to use their invulnerable save you know, your, your Marines at a 3-plus are needing 6s here. You know, your best armored troops against the Pulverizer Cannon are taking a beating and they're dying. I mean, this thing's going to outright kill you. No Terminators are dying to the Pulverizer Cannon on on a failed save here. They're, they're not just taking wounds, they're dying with the 3 damage. So I like the Pulverizer Cannon absolutely a lot. And I... I I honestly, I put the Cassiopeia and Gatling Cannon on my tank. Like, I put it on there on the model. I do not care if somebody wants to go, hey, I want to use the Pulverizer Cannon this time. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, it doesn't, like, WYSIWYG is, is great and all, and I'm more power to you. But, man, that means that you better optimize the living shit out of your model builds when you're building them. And don't just go for what looks cool, or, or you better have a bottomless pit of funding because you want to be able to build a model with all the options. You know, they, they've... that I don't I don't care if you tell me, hey, this... As long as you have the actual model, I don't really care if you if you say, hey, I'm using this configuration this time. Hey, I'm using this configuration this time. Say, hey, I want to use the Pulverizer Cannon this time. Okay, cool, go ahead, whatever. It's not that complicated. I mean, honest to God, it's not. So, I built mine with the Cassegator Gatling Cannon because I think the Cassegator Gatling Cannon looks freaking cool as hell. And uh, I think it's still pretty effective on the table. I mean, crying out loud, 12 attacks, strength 5, does damage. No AP, but you're throwing a bazillion shots down the wind. You know, on the best roll, the Pulverizer Cannon is getting 6, six attacks at, at best. The range is the same. Strength 5s, still wounded on 3s against most infantry units, which is what it's targeted for. So, meh, I think it's still pretty good. But there you go, guys. Rogaldorn. Thing's freaking badass. Let's uh, take a real quick look before we uh, before we sign off here. Uh, the model can be equipped with one of the following two melted guns or two additional heavy stubbers. Those are... Uh, those are the ones that are hanging out in the front. And then you can also be equipped with one of the following... On the Sponsons, two Heavy Bolters or two multi meltas. So its base is the Cascader Gatling Cannon, the Heavy Stubber, the Twin Battle Cannon, and Armored Tracks. They always have Armored Tracks. You only get one. You can't put these guys into a squadron or anything like that. But the downside to them is, is I don't know if this guy is worth the massive points payload that uh, you have to pay for him. I've never played with him on the table. I know that he looks like a freaking Billy Badass though, but his points cost of 285 that's a that's heavy. That's a lot. Your Lehman Rust Battle Tanks are running buck 95. This guy's running almost 100 points more more, to, more than him. I'm not sure if he's 100 worth 100 points more. The extra wounds is are nice. The extra toughness is good. I mean, his weapon loadout is, is good against vehicles, monsters, and against infantry. Man, that's a tough call. I definitely won't be fielding more than probably one of these guys, but he's 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 pretty freaking beefy. So, there you go, guys. Rogaldorn Battle Tank. 
I really enjoyed uh, building this kit. I really enjoyed painting it. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it's going to be cool to be able to get them out on the field and play with them. And uh, yeah, off to the next project, guys. Please uh, like and subscribe here on YouTube to Broncos Gaming World. I'll be putting out more Warhammer videos uh, pretty, uh, pretty much on the regular, hopefully on a somewhat weekly basis. And until next time, guys, please take care and have fun. Boom goes the dynamite.